I'm recording in the uh, space. I think I updated my storage. But I can't remember. So say it with hope and you were sure I could have agreed that we were meant to be but our love is what they talk about what they talk about in movies our love is what they talk about what they talk about so say it with hope and alright hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is Faisa if you are new here do you want to introduce yourself? I'm her husband, Dylan. <laughs> okay. Usually, what was the last time that we did a sit-down video? Was actually our engagement story. Yeah, how we got engaged. Yeah, and which also turned into the marriage story. Yeah. So, yeah. So now we're here to talk about the birth of the newest addition to the Holloway family. So let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room. Yes, this is a bassinet behind us. And yes, that is our daughter in here, currently cooing. So you might hear her throughout the video. We just fed her and put a new diaper on her and laid her down to take a nap. But she's fighting it really hard. But we're gonna go into details of that later on. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll actually do a meat video of her, but being that we want her to sleep and she's been awake for the past three hours, She's not going to be in this video. <laughs> yeah. But, um. She's here in spirit. Okay, she's good. All right. So, um, originally I planned to have a natural birth. I wanted to do everything natural. I didn't want pain medication. I didn't want any of that. That did not happen. Um, so first I guess oh, we'll kind of go back and forth telling like our bits and pieces from our perspective because a lot of it I don't even remember because I was just out of it and it's I was there but I wasn't there. Do you want me to lead up to the hospital? Well, I'll tell the water breaking part. Um, so throughout the, towards the end of the, well, not towards the end. <laughs> Towards the last three months of my pregnancy, I found out that I had low platelets. So I was taking like extra iron and doing everything possible to have a higher um, higher platelet count because if you don't know, if you have a platelets lower than 50, you're not allowed to get an epidural. I didn't want an epidural, but just in case I really needed it, I was trying to do everything possible to keep my platelets high. Um, which they just kept dropping and it wasn't anything that I could do about it. Literally pregnancy was just the cause and that was what my doctor told me. So there was nothing that was going to fix that besides having the baby. So being said, her due date was February 13th. We, when she found out that my platelets dropped to about 90, was it 90? She actually told me that we needed to move my due date up to my induction date up to February 6th, 6th which was Saturday. Yeah, a week, 39 weeks instead of 40. Yep. So they moved it up and was it Tuesday? The Tuesday before, that was on a Friday. That Tuesday, um, I my water broke that morning. So I was on the phone with my mom and I was like, oh, I have to use the bathroom. So I literally walk around the couch and I get to the laundry room right as I'm about to go in the bathroom and all of a sudden it felt like I was just like peeing on myself and it was funny because the entire time like the weeks leading up to this my mom kept saying every time I answered the phone she's like your water's broken your water broke and I'm like nope I wish but literally I told like I was on the phone with her and I was like my water just broke and she was like stop lying I was like no it, it just broke and she did not believe me I had to FaceTime her to prove it to her and um the whole time like I was my legs were just shaking like I couldn't even believe that like this was really about to happen so I ended up I ended up texting Dylan <laughs> I was like my water broke and I guess you can tell your part from this because I, yeah, I was getting ready to go into a meeting at work and um we kind of thought we thought we'd still have some time you know get the bag ready or whatever ready um because like yeah she's gonna get induced a week early we're good nothing to worry about as soon as I'm going into a meeting, I get a text on my phone saying my water broke. So I got that text at like 9.30. I'm in full freakout mode. I tell my one of my bosses, like, hey, my wife's water broke. I got to leave. 
I'm like, all right, go take care of your business. And I left, I got home five minutes later and I burst open the door and she's just on her, on her phone, just talking all normally. And I think I got undressed in three minutes. I put on some sweatpants in the next two and I had our bag packed in the next five minutes. So in the process of her saying that, hey, my water just broke to having all of our bags packed ready to go was at 9.50, 9.45, something like that. And we were getting ready to go out the door. So it was like, bang, bang, let's go. That was our first mistake. Uh, we figured that out when we got to the hospital. The nurse said, hey, you didn't have to come just because your water broke. See, that's what Hollywood makes you believe, that as soon as the water breaks, oh, the baby's coming, you got to go to the hospital right now. No, nah, you can take your time, walk around, because she wasn't having any contractions at all. Mm -hmm. It was, what was the timeline for contractions again? In between how many minutes? Um, I should have pulled that up before we started the video. Um, my contractions were, they were like between 15, of eight, 8 to 15 minutes. They were kind of inconsistent. But like when were you but when are you supposed to be like at the hospital is it six minutes oh when they're um the rule of thumb is two to five minutes i think yeah so she was nowhere in labor no, at all i was not in, not an active labor she could have she could have kept walking around you know get her body like to actually let sophie drop down a little bit more but all this is a moot point anyway yeah but later found out that it, it was possibly a good thing that we were there early. But the reason why they kept us because once your water breaks, you're in there. It doesn't matter if you have contractions or not, you're in there and you're staying in there. Um, so we get in there, um, takes about an hour. She checks me, not dilated at all. Nothing. And um she did say yeah your water definitely broke so we're and when your uh when your water breaks so you know how you're used to seeing like a little poke or a handprint or whatever on your oh. stomach no uh, uh not at all when her water breaks you can see everything absolutely everything and like because your stomach it deflates a couple of inches right and you because there's no more fluid in there you can actually see your baby's like face, foot, whole arm. Well, not face. You're exaggerating. Okay, I'm exaggerating on the face part. But you can see like a literal wave. And I was freaking. I was like, is this normal? Yeah, he literally kept running in there like to be like, hey, this is happening. Is this normal? And they're like, yeah, you're fine. And I think that's mostly because with the whole uh, pandemic that's going on, he hasn't been able to attend any doctor's appointments, Nothing. any ultrasounds. So anything he saw, he was like, I'm going to go ask right now. Because I, I didn't know anything. Okay. So, yeah, like, I, I didn't have a chance to ask any questions, nothing whatsoever. So I've had about 10 months of just built up questions. <laughs> and it, it all exploded on all the nurses, the receptionists, the bay orderly, whoever was in that room. I was like, hey, is this normal or whatever? They got the brunt of everything. My face is just laying back like Dylan everything's fine this is normal I'm like i i know you know that i don't know anything so yeah. i was asking so many questions and they're like it's okay it's fine and i had to make it clear i was like i'm not sending him in there to ask these questions he's doing it on his own i can't yeah. stop him um but the uh, what happened after that um after they checked you in we went to another yeah, room yeah went to the other room um and then they actually got me started on pitocin and i don't know if y'all have heard but they make they say that it's extremely hard to go natural on pitocin because it's basically it's make pitocin is gonna make you contract. So um, they say that because it's making you contract and your body isn't doing it naturally, it's making it a lot. It will make it a lot harder for you to go natural. Yeah. So obviously, I hadn't dilated. I had no contractions, so I had to do something. So got pitocin. So. Luckily, they started me off slow because they knew I really didn't want Pitocin and hopefully my body would kind of take over, which it did. I didn't have to go higher than an 8 and I think she said it goes up to 20 or 30. Come on, mill milliliters? Something like that. I can't Units remember. Units per milliliter? Something. Uh, but you can go up to 30 and she was increasing me by 2 every time. So naturally, her body uh, went up to 3 centimeters dilated. 
and over the four. course four, four centimeters. So her body naturally went up to four centimeters dilated, and over the course of her uh, her whole labor period, which was twenty four hours, um, her body went from four centimeters, and then the most that it got to was seven centimeters. Seven to eight, she said it was perspective. And during that time of four centimeters to seven or eight uh, centimeters, that's where most of our timeline was. And that's where some of the most traumatic stuff that I saw was, and that Faisal went through as well. Yeah, um, I think right after, I was fine up until I got, I got to about a four and I'm like, okay, that's when it got bad. And I hear a lot of people say that's usually the time when people get the epidural is when you get to between five and seven. And um, I think I, I was in labor for what, like eight, nine hours before I got to the four. Yeah. And then uh, I was bouncing on the ball. Luckily, they didn't stop me from doing that because I was like, there's no way that I'm going to be able to have the baby if you just make me lay in the bed the whole time. And uh, they did let me bounce on the ball. And of course, I couldn't eat anything, which I ate a couple of chicken strips. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Don't be like me. Don't do that. Um, but I ate a couple of chicken strips because I really needed my strength. And at that point, I hadn't eaten and it was just yeah. bad. And I needed strength, obviously, to push out a baby. But um we got to about four i uh, got to about, what four or five and at that point i was just it got bad and i wasn't dilating i was and opening was still, my pelvis stretching she was still dead set on not getting an epidural so the nurse gave her some uh a painkiller state all state all yeah and but she doesn't drink or anything so she always has like control over her mindset and everything like that so this was the first uh, painkiller, medical painkiller that she's ever gotten. And they put it in through the IV and it freaked her out. Like I could <laughs> see it in her eyes immediately as soon as it happened. She was laying on her side. She was in pain, obviously. But then as soon as it hit her, you could see her eyes open up real wide. She was like, whoa, something's wrong. I feel dizzy. Call the nurse in. Call my mama. This isn't right. She was freaking out so bad <laughs> from that state all. Cause she had never had anything like that before. She's she screamed, call my mama, call my mama, like 15 times. I'm on the phone, like trying to call her mother. And the nurse came in and repeated everything that she just said. She was like, hey, I told you all this stuff was going to happen. You're going to feel loopy when you take this. She's like, oh, this feels weird. I don't like this. Yeah. And then mama called, like, we should call back a couple minutes later. Yeah. She called back, like, a couple minutes later. And I was just like, mama, I see cartoon giraffes. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember like anything and I honestly thought that I would film the entire process of my labor at that point it was over it was, I, I really don't see how people do that because me and her both we were just so freaking exhausted uh throughout the whole process you know that emotional like adrenaline rush of hey my water broke driving to the hospital you're freaking out you're thinking the baby's coming any second to no you have plenty of time and then it's just a big lull period yeah. and then you're just chilling there for forever well the husband is the wife is in a lot of pain screaming and yelling well i didn't scream and yell did i yes she, when? she screamed and yelled well, when she moan. was when she was going through her contraction she was moaning very loudly that sounded a lot like screaming it freaked me out he's talking it's like a breathing technique it's like it's not a scream it's like a uh, type of yeah like yeah. you're moaning through it but she got really loud with her moans it's better than screaming, so. Yeah, I guess so. But. Can I get graphic? Yeah. Okay. So, daddies, um, your wife's not going to be able to get up to use the restroom uh, for most of the time, okay? You're going to be the person to hold the bedpan and help her out. Which is actually, like, really awesome because, honestly, I don't think a lot of dads do that. Like, he was literally doing the, well, I won't say he was doing the nurse job, but. He was, I was doing the CNAs. He was he was honestly maybe. probably a CNA. Dylan was literally doing my bedpan, like bathroom. All he was doing all that, and, and it's the not, nurses were like, "We're gonna hire you." <laughs> like, and it, it's not just uh, like you see so many different types of bodily fluid 
during that whole portion, like in that bedpan. And it freaked me out because I wasn't used to seeing that, like blood and all that stuff. Process of all that, like I was not prepared for it. In that moment, I was fine, but I'm glad that we're all wearing masks during this because my face would be like this the entire time. Just freaking out. He handled it really well. Yeah. And I felt so bad because I'm like, this is like TMI. Like, he he was, he saw it all. Yeah. It was just crazy. Um, But we get to, what is it, 3 a.m.? My water broke around 8, 9 on Tuesday morning. And we get to 3 a.m. on Wednesday morning. Yeah. And at that point, I was just, I told him to give me the epidural. Yep. And I was over it. I was late. She was in a lot of pain, y'all. Especially pain. with the Pitocin. I was just like. That stayed all wore off. It only lasted yeah. maybe an hour and a half or. Yeah. And they actually, I actually wanted another. They told me they could give two doses. Mm -hmm. And she told me that it was going to wear off really quick. The second dose was. And I was at the point to where I get the epidural or don't. I was like, okay, I need something else. Like this is gone. I need something. And then she was like, well, it's going to wear off a lot quicker this time. So, oh, there's you really know, no it's point in taking it. It's like taking a baby aspirin. Yeah. So it wasn't going to do anything. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Give me the epidural. At first, I was terrified about the fact of a needle going into my back. But trust me, when you're hurting, you don't care what's in there as long as it stops. So the. She felt awesome <laughs> after the epidural. Yeah. The anesthesiologist came in and or the anesthetist oh, i can't remember anesthetist is one. one i think it's oh. anesthetist i don't know um came in and he did my epidural and you know what needle was, was that big yeah i didn't feel a thing i felt amazing he put and it was so crazy because i was still getting contractions like and i'm like how am i supposed to bend over and be still when i'm still getting the contraction and literally as I didn't realize that he put what lidocaine first and I was feel I could not know I was having the contraction but the lidocaine was on there and I was like oh I don't even need the epidural anymore like me sitting up on the bed it feels better and they're like no it's a lidocaine <laughs> I was like oh, okay but yeah um I think Dylan was more were you freaked out during the epidural part yeah because I saw the needle she didn't see the needle like the doctor is behind her back and I'm sit like I had my feet on your like she had she had my feet she had her feet on my legs and I'm holding her to like the stabilizer or whatever because that chair like she drops down like a bucket seat basically oh yeah and so her legs are hanging over and I was sitting up close to her like making sure that she was like stable or whatever because she's still having contractions and stuff well anyway the doctor wheels in his cart and he's getting everything together and he uh undoes un undoes he gets out the uh, epidural uh, needle for it, and that needle was like that long, and I hate needles. I hate blood. I hate all that stuff, and I almost passed out then just seeing the needle, and I was like, yep, that, okay, face it, here it comes. He's about to put the needle in you, <laughs> and she said it. Didn't even feel it. Felt great. Good to go. Amazing. Yep. I was wonderful after yep. that. But I've seen a lot of people where they can't actually move after the epidural. I was picking up my legs and wiggling like wiggling toes. my toes. Like, yeah. and I was like, is that supposed to happen? Is my body just different? Am I metabolizing different? Like, I didn't really understand that. Um, but I get to what, eight o'clock the next morning, which was crazy because I was actually afraid that I wasn't gonna be able to deliver with my doctor. There, one of her partners was, was there and um, I labored the whole day. Luckily, I didn't have to deliver with the other doctor. I just felt more comfortable with the doctor that I've been seeing for the past 10 months. So that's what I wanted. Yeah. And literally the morning, she came in there that morning and, and it was awesome because she actually kept tabs on me the entire time I was laboring. Definitely still involved. And um, she went to, um, she came in there early that morning and she was like, she checked me and she said, yeah, you're seven, eight, and you know, it's prospective, but seven. And I was just like, she's like, at this point, you're at risk for a possible infection because the baby has been in there for so long without any amniotic fluid. And at that point I was just like, that's it. 
Like, yeah. just like take her. her. Her body wouldn't go any further. Mm-mm. And, and she for, said it was because of the way my pelvis yeah. was actually, like, I was effa- like 100% effaced. Like, her, my pelvis just wasn't opening up the way it needed to. Like, there was pressure there. And the nurse kept, I was saying all the things that she said whenever you're ready to push. Like, that I felt pressure and I really had to use the bathroom. But... It, my it pelvis wasn't just wasn't open. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why. It's it's really I guess the way it was tilted. It just wasn't opening up the way it needed to. And at that point, I was over it. I was ready to get it. And at that point, my temperature was a hundred point two point point four. No, hundred point four. And Sophie's heart rate had went from like one thirty, one forty to one seven. No, it was oh. like one seventy six. Mm-hmm. So at that point, it was dangerous, and they needed to get her. So I was I didn't even debate it with you. I just said get let's do the C section. Yeah. And so we and, as soon as, and as soon as uh she said that I had to like find a bath towel or something and bite on that because I was about to lose my mind. Not lose my mind, but I was about to like cry. And as soon as like they started wheeling her and prepping her and getting her ready and they were wheeling her out of the room and they said, You have to wait here, Dad and I was waiting there in the room and I was like <laughs> I need to go. <laughs> I need to go with her. But they would not let me. They were mm-hmm. waiting for a nurse to come and get me. But they wheeled her in there, and they had already started the surgery before they came and got me. Yeah. So I walk into the uh, OR, the operating room, and I just see. I just remember seeing like this red bucket just full of her blood, and which she said I actually didn't lose a lot of blood compared to a lot of C-sections that she does which was weird because I had issues with my platelets and then I barely lost any blood. So It was a lot of blood to nothing me. Nothing but God. Go ahead. It was a lot of blood to me and I almost passed out walking in there. Um and then like I I'm getting around I'm getting around the uh the curtain to where her face is because they don't want the patient seeing anything below what they're doing. And I'm just holding on to her, just saying, you know, remember your breathing or whatever. And then they started cutting into her and cutting into her abdomen, into her muscles, and she felt all of it. Well, I not what I felt a lot of it. They told me it should feel like pressure, which it did. Like the sides when she was going to the side, I'm like, oh, okay, you know, it feels like pressure. But when she got in the middle and she was cutting through the perineum, I want to say. It was sharp, and they were like, it should feel like pressure. And I'm like, it's sharp. So I was, I think I screamed to the top of my lungs, and I was so exhausted. He gave me something, and then I could still feel it, and they waited a second, and he gave me something else. Next thing I know, I woke up, and she was literally on the table, and Dylan was like, face it, she's over there. Yeah. Like, so, I fell asleep. I was exhausted. So she actually fell asleep a couple of times on the operating table. Um, so the anesthesiologist... He was, um, you know, putting in medicine and everything and helping her out. And I'm talking with him, like, hey, what are you giving her or whatever? Like, I know. And I'm just trying to coach face it through. Meanwhile, she falls asleep. Next thing I know, they take Sophie out of face up, which is a very crazy experience if you've never experienced that before. And they take her over to uh, the uh, the NICU, not the NICU bed, but the... Um, the baby bed. Mm-hmm. They take her over to a baby bed and they start hitting her with um, oxygen. And I'm freaking out because, like, like again, in Hollywood, you see um, babies come and, like, they're yelling and screaming or whatever. But Sophie wasn't. She was really quiet. And I'm freaking out. I'm like, holy crap. Like, what happened? Face is passed out. Sophie's getting hit with a respirator. I'm losing it. Like, I'm almost crying my eyes out like crazy and um finally uh the nurse says do you want to come and talk to your daughter yeah she responded really well to the oxygen like super quick yeah it was like bang yeah uh, but in the moment it felt like 10 minutes yeah it was awful but i went over there and i talked with her she looks completely different by the way than yeah. what she did uh that she day does. um and i got some really good pictures of that but talking with her like she knew my voice immediately because I talked with her like throughout the duration of the pregnancy and she just looked like when she heard his voice the nurses were saying how she just looked up at him like she was looking for him yeah it was so cute it was awesome and then like they uh face was actually woke up a little bit and they um you know showed Sophie to face of 
Yeah, and I said, and I, I think I'll put that as a picture okay. on there. And um, I think I just reached up and touched and I said, hey, my girl. And she instantly gave me like this pouty lip and I literally lost it. Yeah. Um, And then from there on. They, they had to put her in the NICU and monitor yeah. her levels because she was in an atopic or apoxic. Environment. And, it was, yeah, yeah it was acidic. Acidic. Yeah. yeah. She was in an acidic environment for a long time so they had to monitor and especially her oxygen levels and everything making sure that she was okay so she had to go to the NICU uh, she never came down to the hospital room where we were so yeah and then uh Faisa went into um what was that room the postpartum the post-op post-op she went yeah she went into post-op and they got her stabilized and everything was oh, good speaking of which literally as soon as they finished the surgery and they sewed me up and and that was over literally i started wiggling my toes i don't know how i was metabolizing this medication so quick but i was i knew at that point i was like this is about to hurt because like as soon as they finished i was wiggling my toes and wiggling my legs i was like that's it literally get in the room it's like a band wrapped around my stomach it felt like it was just it was burning and Honestly, I feel like they kept saying that I had a high pain tolerance because they were asking like, what's your pain? I'm like, it's about a seven, eight, like, and, but I was so chill about it. So I don't think they were like expecting that. They finally gave me, um, was it morphine? Morphine did nothing. Didn't touch it like at all. Um, but I think what I was most excited about was that I could finally drink something. Like at first they gave me ice chips. I didn't throw up. Yeah, and then here you just crashed after that. Yeah, I mean we, we like, have been going. Pro I probably got two and a half hours of sleep total during that whole process. Like both of us off and on. Yeah. Uh, over those twenty four hours, and like you're just just so emotionally drained at that point. And then they finally got her in a post op, stabilized her. I sat in the nearest most uncomfortable uh, hospital chair, and I just passed out. Like there. There was nothing else. Like, yeah. my body was done making cortisol and adrenaline. It was, you need to relax for a second. Yeah. And after that, um, it was a process. Um, Dylan visited Sophie, like, every two, hour, two to three hours. I wasn't able to get up for the first day, which mm -hmm. broke my heart completely. I would, and, I would FaceTime her while I was in there. Yeah, and I could not take it. Even thinking about it now makes me upset. Um but I was able to get up the next day. I was determined. I'm like, I'm not about to just stay in here. Um, but we ended up getting discharged on Saturday. They make you stay a little bit longer for C-sections, three to four days. Mm -hmm. um, we ended up getting discharged on Saturday and we've been with her ever since. We both got discharged on the same day. Um, everything came back like wonderfully like all her levels were great yeah. she didn't end up getting the bacteria infection even though we were treated with antibiotics and so we did we were so scared yeah <laughs> we were freaking out it uh, was bad and to see her with all the tubes in her yeah. throat and everything worst feeling ever yeah uh knowing everything that we know now we probably would have just went straight in and just said give us a c-section right yeah. now like Absolutely. we wouldn't have played around whatever we would have set a date done it stuck with it that's it we wouldn't have played around trying to go natural right and in the process um right now like when, when i was going through it i was just like i don't know if i want to do this again like i've always said i wanted three or four kids i now i feel now i'm over it i'm like i could do that again like you know it was worth it like i could i could totally do that again but we're definitely going to wait a while, and I'm pretty sure I'll probably just schedule that C-section. But I've seen a lot of people that were able to have a natural birth yeah. after that. Oh, but literally with C-sections, well, I could do a whole video where I talk about, like, my specific... The day after C-section? Well, talk about my experience with having a C-section. I'll do a separate video yeah, she, on talking she can, about that. But She can talk about the her experience with the C-section. I can talk about my experience the day after the C-section. Oh, Help that was out. yeah. Well, I mean, it, we pretty much said the same thing. He was the yeah. he was the one that was changing my bedpans, helping me shower, like, and I feel bad because I kind of peed on him once, 
because yeah, I couldn't squat to get to the toilet because it hurt that bad. I Getting mean, up and sitting down, once you get up that first time after that C-section, you're like, I'm not sitting down ever again. I literally kept like pacing the room. You do not want to sit down again after that. It, and I've had surgery before, so I know like the day after surgery is like one of the most painful uh, you know, feelings because all the blood goes to the newly, uh, the new area in your body that was just cut open. So, but to use your core, it's like yeah, and good grief! Uh, that first, um, that first bathroom visit after surgery, it was just me and her. We go in there, uh, and it was like I, she couldn't sit down, so she had to open her legs a little bit, and she couldn't open them far at all. So it was just like that. I could barely fit the bedpan underneath her, and it was just. It was just pee, the blood was coming out of her. <laughs> it was pee and blood. Oh, and the gas that you get, like the air that's in your stomach that you have to like fart out. It took me, what, two days to be able to fart? Yeah. Oh my God. I had to be sitting on a toilet with my knees to my ears in order for me to fart. Yeah. And surprisingly, well, I'll keep that in my other video, but yeah, I was so swollen, like my feet and hands and everything swollen my fingers have still not gone down i can't fit my ring he actually just ordered me my push gift which is the new ring set so that's actually gonna fit me now so my fingers are still they're not swollen but i guess they've just grown i don't know no. but yeah but yeah that was that was our experience hopefully it gave you awesome insight as well hopefully it's not our same experience at all but yeah. yeah wishing love and baby dust to everybody that's trying to conceive that is wanting to go for a natural birth process wish you all the best and i'll definitely be talking about more stuff like this soon and we'll catch you guys next time bye